So now what we're going to discuss is the pretreatment process or the manual pretreatment process for direct-to-garment printing. Um, there's a couple supplies that we're going to be using. Uh, this gets supplied with your system. It is a Wagner HVLP, uh, uh, which stands for high velocity, low pressure. Um, when we set these things up, there is a proper way to do it. Let's go ahead and remove this from the box. Pull out the packing materials. We have our spray nozzle tip, set that to the side. We have our air pressure, it's basically like a big old hair dryer. We have our reservoir bottle. And our uh, tube on the bottom. You have some grease and a little spray cup. So we'll just set to the side, we never really use this. The grease can also be used for your uh, WIMS um, uh, circulation pump, the tubing that goes in there. You can use this as a petroleum jelly. So we can set that to the side as well. So when I'm setting up this gun for our process, the first thing I'll do is attach my tube. You'll want the curved end to be facing towards the front of the nozzle. So that way if I tip my bottle, it's going to be drawing from that top corner. With this tip, I will unscrew this a little bit and make sure that this goes horizontal. All right. That way our spray pattern comes out in this angle instead of this angle. So I'll tighten that back down. Okay. I can screw on the bottom of my reservoir. Okay. Nice and tight. Take my spray tip. The way this works, it has a little groove that it fits into. So I slide it in sideways, and it clicks into place, just like so. All right. When I set how much velocity I want this to come out, if it's all the way in, like it is right now, this is to the maximum. That way it has more trigger speed, or distance that it can travel. And then all the way to the out position will be to the minimum. So I want it about dead center. So what I'll do is loosen this up, so that way, the bottom edge of this gray cap is basically going to be even with the yellow post that has the spring around it underneath. All right. When I do use this, I use two fingers, so that way it pushes all the way to the back. If I just do one finger, you can click it in here, the motor will activate, but it won't actually spray anything. So that's why I use two fingers and push it all the way to the back. Okay, so that's setting up your sprayer. The next thing you would do is take your pretreatment. Uh, this is basically a one liter bottle. It'll fill up the reservoir to about right there. So you just pour that in. One of the things I do like to do before adding pretreatment is I'll just shake the bottle really well to get it all agitated back again. Same thing in the mornings uh, when I come in to start pretreating shirts or run production. I'll take my sprayer and just shake it back and forth to kind of mix it back up. All right. What pretreatment is, is a basic like salt water and polymer type solution. You will want to keep these bottles in a different location than you uh, keep your ink. Um, reason being, if you forget and choose the wrong bottle, say white versus pretreatment, you pour this into your white ink reservoir, you're going to have a very expensive repair. Let me show you what it actually does to white ink. I'll pour a little bit here on the table. Put a little white ink next to it. And then I'm going to mix these two together. So a chemical reaction forms right when it starts touching it. And then what will happen is it turns into a solid. When it comes to pretreatment in white ink, you need to make sure that you pretreat at least 19 feet away from your printer. The reason being, the mist that comes off the sprayer can get near your nozzle plate and it can cause this reaction. And it would basically, you would have to replace your print head. So now that we have our pretreatment sprayer set up, we'll add our pretreatment in 
and we'll take it into, and a lot of people, we suggest that you um, take your pretreatment and do it in a separate room if possible. Um, if you are going to pretreat a whole bunch of shirts and you're limited on space and things to that order, you might want to cover your machine while you're doing the pretreatment process. But if you do it in a separate room, you can just do it like normal. Uh, you'll also want to create uh, a pretreatment booth of some sort to catch that overspray so it doesn't make a huge mess.